We have a sponsor, the good old boys at Audible. You guys should know the drill by now. I support a great business or idea before I touch on the video topic. Audible is a fantastic online service that provides audiobooks to all us idiots who can't or don't want to read. My current argument for why you should check it out is commutes. That's a huge part of your life that you probably just endure with music on repeat. But you can use that time to enjoy a story or just learn something. My current recommendation is the original folk and fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm, a pack of fairy tales to listen to during your commute or just going to bed, and it's great D&D inspiration. They have a 30-day free trial if you want to just sample the service, and whether or not you want to stick to it, you get one audiobook and two of their originals for absolutely free. Visit audible.com slash runesmith or text runesmith to 500-500 or click the link down there. That's not the JonTron or the funny Danny and Drew men. You can only put RuneSmith after that dot com or to the 500-500. The rest won't work. Okay, sorry to have ruined your whole day with a free offer. Here's your video. Welcome to a video about the origin of golems, where I run through some weird story about a rabbi and then I tell you where the concept is nowadays. The history of golems begins with a single verse in Psalms 139 verse 16. That's right, idiot. All the cult D&D shit and fantasy creatures we have now comes from religion. I'll be using religion a little bit to illustrate the video because that's what history was. So let's read the Bible for two seconds before I make some poop jokes. Speaking in reference to the Lord, it states, You saw me when I was yet unformed. Looked to my future and saw all my numbered days. That part about being unformed is also translated as not complete, unborn, primordial, unfinished, or stupid. The original word was golem, which means Dade from Filthy Frank was a golem. But as words go, the base definition of not entirely there gained the meaning of both an unborn baby and someone whose brain function is on a level equal to three quarters of a lemming. But if you know our origin story, that naked dude that God made that turned into Gus Johnson and Sven were unformed, made from clay, and then he stole one of our ribs and slathered it in barbecue sauce. But I digress, to a degree. The first guy who was alive was made of mud and fire. Fire and mud. It, it, it. We're clay golems, okay? We're, we're, we're actual, we're all golems, all of us, you and me. The same thing happened with Prometheus' story, but he stole the fire instead of making it and got horribly punished for creating us. I mean, look where we are now. Prometheus really fucked up and I almost think he deserves it. We figured out how to make our own fire and now Australia. Stepping away from us as a failed race, the definition of golems became mindless clay constructs created by men with some degree of divine power. Before I delve into a couple of really amazing stories, let's look at common traits of golems. Firstly, they can only be created by Jewish wizards, rabbi sages whose practices brings them closer to divinity and grants them authority over creation, which is exactly what clerics do. Interesting world we live in, isn't it? Secondly, they work based on true name magic. These true names or oaths are tied to the Hebrew word Shem, which means uh, true name. There's a whole bunch of info about how they range from 4 to 72 letters and that God's four letter name used to be Tetragrammaton, which is the coolest name for a Pokemon or a Transformer like a, like a big dinosaur that I think I've ever heard. As an addendum to that second detail, the names were inscribed on golems or on their activation stones, which could be removed to kind of turn them off. Okay, now we're getting to the fun part, because there are a handful of stories about golems having superpowers and then going apeshit. Golem number one, the golem who got too big. Our first rabbi, who I will be calling a divine wizard solely because it's more interesting to me, was a Polish wizard whose name was something close to Elijah. He was a master of true name magic and created a man from clay in order to do hard labor. How badass is that? This is a story based in our history about a wizard who made a clay thug to do his bidding. He placed a true name on its neck, uh, Emmet. I believe the Hebrew word Emmet means truth, usually used in the recited blessing Emmet uh, Veyatsev, which just means God equals true. As this rabbi's descendants recently told the story, the golem started growing at an alarming rate, just swelling up like a giant baby Bowser before the rabbi's final fight on Yoshi back. In the climax of the story, he pulled the true name from the golem's neck, then the entire thing was disintegrated and turned to dust like Thanos. The fact that this story has no lesson aside from maybe hubris makes me feel uh, like it's real? I don't know. The Golem of Prague was the reason I made this video, and it had the working title of History Check, but who the fuck's gonna click on that? 
Judah Lo ben Bezalel, the residing Jewish wizard of Prague, created a powerful golem made from clay from a nearby river. You know that real big important river? Yeah, who cares? But, but he built it to, fuck, but he built it to, and I quote, defend the ghetto from anti-Semites and pogroms. The power word truth was also written on his forehead, but the Shem, which I assume was the golem's name, was placed in its mouth. His name was Joseph, or Yosef, or Yosali. He could supposedly not be slain by any weapon of that age, could become invisible at his own will, and summon the spirits of the dead. Like holy fuzzy moonlit cow poop, imagine being a Roman grunt sent to the dirty and dingy ghetto to exterminate a few people because your emperor is racist, and then having an eight foot tall clay man appear out of thin air, bend your sword like a copper wire, and then call upon all the spirits of the dead to destroy your body. In the name of God. I, had, I would be very scared. As the story goes, in the way that makes the most sense to me, the rabbi would remove the activation shem every Sunday so the golem wouldn't desecrate the Sabbath. Which is kind of hilarious to me, because this means the rules of golems were as follows. You make it in the name of God, to serve God. God allows you to make it and design its purpose, but because you made it and not God, it's too stupid to respect God. And if it tries to defend Prague during God's day of rest, everybody loses control of it. And that's what happened. One day, our good friend and wizard Lo drank too much Saturday wine, and during his hangover forgot to pluck out the golem's name. So it went apeshit, destroyed the ghetto it was protecting, and kept going until the rabbi removed its shem and it fell to pieces. Then they put it in an attic, and that's where the story ends. Well, there was a rumor that a Nazi went upstairs to poke it, and they found him dead. Also, the attic is off limits. To close out the video, I'll give a little brief of how they've translated into modern fantasy. Golems are now elemental spirits, trapped in small objects of arcane power, such as gemstones or runic inscriptions. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? Once the spirit is trapped, the body of the golem itself acts as a machine created to do its master's bidding, as long as the spirit is kept under control. After taking enough damage in combat or erosion over time, the spirit regains its sentience and tries to destroy everything nearby until it is freed by its own body being destroyed. Expanding on that concept of a golem's rage, I'd love to add the idea to our stories where the trapped spirits just need a rest day. That'd be pretty cool, I guess. Okay, go enjoy some credits, and then another video, or listen to that audiobook, or look for my book. Okay, bye.